Hello and welcome to the debut presentation of a new webinar series called Out to Lunch, organized by the ESIP Education Committee and hosted by the Earth Science Information Partners, a national organization with over 120 members collaborating to advance the use of Earth Science data across society. My name is Margaret Mooney. And I have the honor of introducing Luann Dahlman, a science writer and editor for NOAA's Climate Program Office, who will be presenting Climate Explorer, a research application built to support the U.S. Climate Resilience Toolkit. Welcome, Luann. Thanks for presenting. Absolutely, and thanks for having me, Margaret, and everyone else who has chosen to tune in today. It's great to be here, and thanks for coming out to lunch with me. Um, I'm one of the editors for the Climate Resilience Toolkit, and I've worked um, with the people who developed the tool that we're going to look at today. So um, sit back and relax. We're going to take a look. The URL to get here is toolkit.climate.gov. And once here, it's one of those long pages. There's a lot of features you can explore. But today, we're going to focus on exploring climate in your own location. So this very this call to action button here at the top level will take you to a panel that's further down and talk a little bit about the Climate Explorer. The very top button says Launch Climate Explorer. We're going to do that but I do want to call your attention to the Learn More About Climate Explorer. When you go here on your own, this can serve as an overview, um, remind you some of the things I said during this, or just help you remember some of the features of the tool. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Climate Explorer. It opens in a separate window, and the first thing you'll see is the splash screen. Um, the main thing that Climate Explorer does is offers climate observations and projections in both maps and graphs from 1950 to 2100 for every county in the contiguous United States. This means in an educational context, you can have your students use it to check how climate conditions have changed over the past six decades and how they're projected to change over the next eight decades. I'm getting a note that the screen has disappeared. I wonder if you can work on that. Margaret, make sure I'm the presenter. Okay, it looks like I'm still presenting. Let me know if uh, that changes, though. What we're going to do is go to the search by location. We're going to spend most of our time in this section of the tool today. And as an example, I'm simply going to type in Minneapolis. You can use a zip code or a county name, uh, whatever you like there. But um, I've typed in Minneapolis. And the first thing you'll find out, it knows Minneapolis. And it'll tell you the county name with, that it's in and then offer a series of graphs That's and other information below that. It kind of dropped you again, Luann, when, when you typed in the new place. That's, that's not good. I'll continue doing it's, that. It's, just. it's back again. Okay, let me know. <laughs> I'll be careful about what I'm clicking on. Okay, so when you very first arrive, it might look a little confusing, um, but the good news is we have lots of ways to tell you what's going on here. Starting with a lot of the elements of the graph can be turned on and off so that you can focus on just one at a time. One thing I'd like to point out, I'm just going to go into a different tab here. When, I, when we show a little envelope like this, and you might wonder what we're showing, this is um, how we represented a lot of spaghetti. We took the results from 20 separate global climate models at each time step and only shown the minimum and maximum. And then we also show the median, the middle line for each of those. 
So whenever you're looking at these graphs, um, don't let that confuse you. Um, and another thing that you can do anytime you're interested in what is this I'm looking at, we have this great little thing called how to read this. This will invoke a sequence of help pop-ups that describe each of the elements of the graph. So it first tells about the whole graph, and if you continue to click Next, it will walk you through each of the elements of the graph to tell you what they are and sometimes offer additional information in a link. So for instance, if you want to understand what RCP 4.5 is, or 8.5, And it also points out that we have a time slider at the bottom. So in order to read some of this, I'm just going to say here in Hennepin County, the very first thing we're looking at here is observations. And these are mean daily maximum temperatures measured across this county and averaged together. They're shown as the amount that they are above or below the average for that period. The historical modeled envelope, these are from climate projections, and what this does is shows that the observed values are captured within the envelope of the projections. This is what gives us confidence that the projections are valid and why we believe they will remain valid for the future. Of course, we're not certain if humans are going to uh, do something about climate policy and lower our emissions, or if emissions will continue to grow as they have and they'll become higher. You can sort of select which, how much confidence you have in, in our ability to, to make something happen, to, to look at uh, future conditions. We can also see the medians. These are only there for convenience so that you can see what the, the main portion would be. For temperature, we also can look at monthly versions um, for the 30 years centered on 2025, 2050, or 2075. Um, we could look at min minimum temperatures, days with maximums above 95 degrees. In this case, you can see over the past 50 years, Minneapolis's county has had very few, but in the future we can expect more. This is one of the things where it's kind of convenient to look, use the time slider if you want to focus on a specific decade in the future, for instance. And again, you can always compare it with the other emissions scenario. Another Parameter is days below 32 degrees. You can see those are going down. So those are the temperature projections. If you're not as crazy about graphs and you'd rather see this information on a map, you can simply click the map link and it will show you the same information within a map and it allows you to compare the emissions scenarios and it allows you to look a decade at a time. I'm going to just scroll further down the page and get to precipitation. One of the first things you may notice here is the variability of the observations is not captured as well by the historical modeled projections and that's because we simply aren't as good at projecting precipitation as temperature. Um, there's also no real discernible trend for the future, nor any difference between higher and lower emissions in this. So that's an indicator that we just aren't as good with precipitation yet. Um, we can, however, uh, project days of precipitation above one inch, although, once again, observations and model are not that, are not well correlated. Um, one more section here gives you some other items. 
um, for instance, heating degree days. If you don't know what those are, there's a little question mark. It'll ask you, tell you, <laughs> number of heating degrees per day reflects how much energy we spend to heat buildings during the cool season. And that's going down. Not, not to be confused with cooling degree days, the amount of energy we use to cool buildings, and that's going up. Finally, there's a section of weather stations that will give a way to compare past climate and weather. Any um, weather station you click, you'll get a graph, and you can find out how to manipulate these on that link I showed at the very beginning, but you can go here and see, um, for instance, during the past winter we had a couple of days a couple of spells that were quite a bit colder than normal, and our precipitation for the year was above normal. And you can um, compare these for years at a time and find some of the coldest or warmest years or see where the variability is much higher in the winter than the summer. Last but not least, I'm going to go back to the main Climate Explorer page and point out there are two more areas. One is called view by variable, and this is just a way to get to those maps um, separately from the graphs. And this allows you to zoom in and compare emissions at different times in the next decade. We lost your screen again. Oh, thank you for letting me know. I'm not sure why that won't stick, but got it back. Um, Okay, and the very last section is called View by Topic. And this allows you to look at a couple of um, pairs of maps and overlay them and see how um, your assets are, are maybe affected by climate hazards. Um, and we've just had a... This first layer, for instance, shows um, BIA, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, uh, lands in the United States. It's a little touchy, as many mapped zoom sorts of things are. But the good news is what it allows you to do is turn on a sea level rise layer and examine which areas are going to be impacted by sea level rise. Not having a lot of luck right this moment with this, but it's a, it's a simple GIS sort of thing that's already set up for you and allows you to go in. So for instance, I'm looking at this Indian land, this tribal nation, and uh, I can show that portions of it will be inundated. That's it for what I wanted to show you. I do want to also remind you that there are two more places to find information. One's called About, and there's a lot of information there about where the data come from and all, and also the definitions link has a set of frequently asked questions. Your screen jumped out again. Okay, and anybody have any questions for now? Everyone's unmuted if they have a question. I'm just going to say on uh, our behalf, M Margaret and I practiced this yesterday and didn't have this problem, but um, I changed browsers. That may have been the problem. And I noticed Shelly Olds asked, is all the data was for Hennepin County? Yes, except for when you get to the maps. How do I zoom in on those graphics? Um, the shift key on your keyboard um, will help. It's, it's a little touchy, but you can learn to zoom in on the weather station graphics by holding the shift key down. Those graphs are zoomable, like maps. Thank you very much, Bruce Moravchik. Show the temperature graph again. And I've gone back to it. 
I'm just going to answer a question from Betsy that says, we will be recording all of these and they'll be available on a link uh, on the ESIP wiki. Kelly, I think you had a question perhaps about the temperature graph. I don't know if uh, Margaret can unmute people if you wanted to speak your question. Everyone's unmuted. Oh. This is all from the climate model, isn't it? Right, but I'm saying we could, the weather station had record, and you could look at the weather station, and then that would tie in the, <laughs> the weather station. Oh, if you wanted to compare it to, say, Mara? Yeah, it's true, by the way, who's ever we can sort of hear. Um, all of this, all the information in these envelopes, the red, blue, and gray envelopes are from climate models. The weather stations, though, are observed, observed data at that particular station. Um, Shelley is asking me to remind her of the red and blue line. Those are the medians. The middle result of the uh, projections for each scenario. So there are 20 climate models represented here, and the dark blue line represents the middle of all 20 models in each case. Same thing for the red line. So the blue line is the lower emission projection and the red line and red envelope are the higher emission uh, projections. Is that correct? Yeah, and, and keep in mind when I show the historical modeled and then we recognize that the observations are really all around within that envelope. The envelope shows us the range of variability we can expect. So even though the observations might be at the lower edge of the envelope, the envelope is, represents all the projections for each time step. Thank you. This is our first um, out to lunch thing, and we're really glad everybody showed. Uh, what I'm thinking, though, is we may even record it so we can not have that um, dropping that we experienced. Meanwhile, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us um, and remind you that in two weeks, at the same time, uh, Stephanie scholart Ooze will be presenting Climate Bits and NEO. So thanks for going out to lunch with us. Goodbye, everyone. Adios. Thank you.